Hey Clashers, the game manager of Clash of Clans, Stuart, has answered the most common question from the community in a Reddit Ask Me Anything. He answered, for example, when the next update is going to happen with the June update, and as well, what is the plan with the Town Hall 17? On top of that, what is the plan for those merged defenses? And what is the current balance state of the game? Like, what are the plans for the future? So I thought we should take a look at most of his answers and see what we can take out of that and actually learn about the future of the game. So let's dive into it. And we're starting things off with the question of the merge defenses. What is exactly the plan for those merge defenses? How many more defenses are going to be merged? And what exactly is the plan there? Well, the answer of Stuart was pretty straightforward. Eventually, we're going to have all of those cannons and archer towers being merged up. As well, he's apologizing for the current problem with the aesthetics, which means, at least that's what I'm reading in between the lines, is that we will most likely not get new level for the archer towers or for the cannons during the Tunnel 16, because eventually all of them will be merged, so I'm not really sure if it's worth it then for them to design the new archer towers and everything, if eventually all of them are turning into multi archer towers or even the Rekoshi cannons. So this is the first news which we have there. Another news which he dropped for Tunnel 17 and for the merged cannons and multi archer towers is that if you want to upgrade to Tunnel 17 later this year, you have to merge every single defense. This is mandatory because they really like the concept of merging together defenses because this allows them to reduce the overall amount of buildings in the village to make sure that they can, that they can keep adding new buildings and at the same time not really losing anything because cannons they kind of feel old, the same as Archer Towers having something new like multi Archer Towers or the new cannons feels refreshing, at least that's based on his answer. So that makes sense, so make sure that you're merging all of your defenses if you want to upgrade to Tunnel 17 right away later this year. Tunnel 17 is a really good talking point because there was another question from the community. What is the plan with Tunnel 17? Well, Stuart said that the theme of this Town Hall is already set, and as a theme, this is pretty much for Town Hall 16, for example, it was the theme of nature, for Town Hall 15, it was the theme of magic and this mystic um, overall approach, and Town Hall 17 already apparently has been decided already. He's not saying what exactly the theme is going to look like, but... He's saying that with 80%, he, he's being sure that they're going to rework the weapon of the Town Hall to make sure that it's not having the Inferno Beams anymore, but instead having an Eagle artillery with the Town Hall as a combination. I've literally no clue how that's supposed to work. I'm really looking forward to then see how it's exactly going to work, but that sounds really interesting because we have not had a change of this Town Hall weapon for quite some time. Since Town Hall level 12, we had this... Tesla multi inferno tower theme overall as a defense for quite some time. So having this now getting reworked to something different, that looks kind of cool and might be a really cool idea. So I'm really looking forward to learn more about that. But that's pretty much what he said then about Tunnel 17. But with Tunnel 17, there's another problem then, and that is somehow new players need to catch up. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever as a new player to start with Clash of Clans. And Stuart completely agreed on this. And with that, he means time and cost reductions within updates. And this is what he exactly said. He said that we have quite a big set coming in our June update. This is right. Within the June update, which we have around the corner, we are going to have time and cost reductions yet again for those town level. And he said it's a big set. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I think this is really, really needed to make sure that new players have still the option of catching up in the game with even starting way later than some other players with starting in general the game and playing it. And since he mentioned the June update, he has well mentioned already the date. That's right, that's something which Supercell has not done in quite some time. The last time where they actually announced a date for an update was in 2019, which unfortunately was the first April. Well, back then they found some bugs last second and the update has to be pushed back, which, uh, well, caused quite a quite a bit of confusion and since then Supercell has just stopped doing that and just releasing any possible release dates in general and well apparently they've changed that 
They're saying on the 17th June, so just in a few days, we're going to have the June update. And that is the date which they have planned. This means if there are last second bugs or anything problematic happening, we obviously going to have that pushed back. But the goal is to have the update releasing on the 17th June, which is kind of cool because that's just around the corner. So we can get already hyped up for sneak peeks. And that's then, well, making sure to follow the channel if you want to stay up to date when it comes down to sneak peeks, always staying up to date about Clash of Clans. And with that, you're always informed about whatever is going to happen within the game. And staying up to date is more important than it has ever been before. Because we have so many events happening, new things happening, and there's another thing on the menu which Stuart has already told us, which is going to drop in the June update. And that is, that's right, a hard mode. Which means it's an optional hard mode which you can activate for friendly challenges and friendly wars. Which is really nice, because this means pro players or in general players who really like the challenge of somehow finding the best strategies, being the best in the game, they can challenge themselves within this optional mode. What I'm reading between the lines here though is that since it's optional, it does not go to happen with the Legend League for example, because that would be then not optional anymore, right? So that is for sure the first important thing. Hard mode is going to come in the June update, and we're going to have to see how that's exactly going to work. Another thing which Stuart said, which I really want to highlight is as well for competitiveness, how and when are they going to introduce that? Because what he said exactly is it would be used for the world finals this year. What I'm reading out of this is that they are not going to use it right away for qualifiers, for the world championship, for example, and such things, which gives us a really interesting question. Are going to like our community events going to use that new hard mode? Because if they're going to do so, which might be more enjoyable for viewers, it might be less worth it for the competitive teams. Because then they have to concentrate on two different metas while playing the hard mode, but they have to qualify for the world championship on the easy mode if this sentence of Stuart is correct, that they're only planning of using this hard mode for the world's finals, which is then later this year, right? So that is for sure a lot of questions which we will answer then hopefully within the sneak peeks or when this new optional mode has been released. But the reason for introducing this in general is just because of this vast and this insanely big gap between the skill level of the different players within the game. For that, they want to kind of have the game overall being easier for the majority of clashes. We're still having the optional option for the pros to play the game in a hard mode. And that is then again the reasoning for this. And with talking about the overall balance of the game, I think we should get to the next topic, which has been the changes made recently to the overall difficulty level of the game. Because we had recently a lot of nerfs to defenses for the town level 10 all the way up to the town level 15. And for a lot of people within the social media bubble, I call it, there were a lot of question marks. Why is Supercell decreasing the difficulty level even further for town level, which are supposed for them or like which are based on their, um, their saying already pretty easy? Well, Supercell has finally, finally said some numbers, okay? It was only pretty much one number, <laughs> but at least a number, okay? And they said that based on their numbers, the second hardest town level was actually town level 12. And well, that was not the greatest experience then for newer players based on them. And that's why they have adjusted those balances uh, for those middle town level again. And that's why they have made town level 12 and the surrounding town level again way easier. I would have just liked to have those numbers in general. Like what is based off their data, based off their numbers, what is the hardest town level? What is the easiest? Is it as easy or as hard as we would expect as like maybe a more competitive community or overall a more active community playing the game? I would love to see those numbers. I don't think it would hurt Supercell or whatever. So I would just love to see the numbers and understand then better the reasoning of balance changes. Because with hearing that Town 12 was the second hardest triple raid wise town level there is in Clash of Clans, those balance changes then at least are easier to explain then 
for the vast majority of players. But without knowing that, that's a bit problematic. So we're getting back to the point. The transparency of Supercell sometimes with sharing some inside numbers would be greatly appreciated. But overall, it's already nice that Stuart is doing those Ask Me Anything um, posts more often on Reddit. And I really hope that they're going to keep that up. But let's move on to the next point. And that next point is still connected to the balance changes we just had. Because the next question is like, why did Supercell introduce those balance changes during the Clan War League? Something which they typically always avoid doing. The reason for this is that it took Supercell longer to finalize those patch notes, finalize, finalize the balance changes, and at the same time, they wanted to release it before the June update, which we can now understand because we know that the planned date for the June update is the 17th June, so it now that at least makes more sense. They still said it was not optimal, but at least it's now more understandable. Still, not optimal. Let's hope that's not going to happen again in the future and they have those balance changes separate to Clan War League or any other major events happening in the game. But overall, Stuart talked about a lot of different topics and I tried to really pick the most interesting topics for you and there are still some which I feel like are really interesting. The first one is the price of walls. That's right, that was a question why walls are so expensive and Stuart even called it silly. So those um, prices might not be up to date anymore. So let's see if they're going to change that for the future. But what he said, originally those high prices were planned for players who are super active in the game just to get their resources somewhere and don't make them, or don't have them go to waste, right? But with so many events and new things happening right now in the game, this could be for sure changed in the future and that would be quite nice, right? Another topic which he mentioned is, and which is everywhere when it comes down to Clash of Clans, and that is using your heroes while they're sleeping. And well, he gave a really interesting answer, and I will just read it to you so you know exactly what I mean. His exact wording was, yes, we have got a plan to try something out in the summer. I hope you like it. Well, I can just repeat myself again. Make sure you follow this channel if you want to make sure that you're always staying up to date when it comes down to changes like this and looking forward to see what you think of those changes. But for now, he's just teasing us with this small sentence. But hey, I take that. Let's hope that the rework is going to be great and I hope that you're going to like it. But let's move forward to the next topic which he has talked about, which is the support. The support recently in Clash of Clans had a lot of problems. A lot of people had problems with the support and he said, yes, things are not going right for the support currently and they are doing adjustments and hoping that it's going to improve over time and that he's trusting in the um, humans which are working in those specific parts within the company. But I just hope it's going to improve indeed in the future. But for now, he's acknowledging that there is a problem. But I can just hope it's going to really improve. Otherwise, he has talked about many more points. And to be honest, if I would have mentioned every single point, I would just get like way too long video. So I will just make sure that I'm linking to you the entire Ask Me Anything down below in the comments. A huge thank you to Stuart for actually doing this Ask Me Anything. I think it's really greatly appreciated that Supercell is more transparent and I hope that they're going to improve that even further for the future with sharing especially some numbers, some reasoning behind balance changes, changes in general that will be really highly appreciated I think by a lot of people in the community. And otherwise, let me know what you think of all of those changes, all of those answers, and I will see you guys back tomorrow with the next class video. Other than, see ya and bye bye.